In the past three modules, we have reviewed the cell wall inhibitors, cell synthesis inhibitors, and protein inhibitors. So what's left? The last broad category of antimycobacterial antibiotics will be reserved for that module. That leaves us mostly with the pathogen-specific treatment options. So let's get started. The intestinal irritating Campylobacter genus is susceptible to the macrolide drug class, such as azithromycin. Fluoroquinolones can also be used but resistance has been growing, so this might not be a good option in the near future. This bug is usually self-limiting and antibiotic treatments are only needed in severe disease and high-risk individuals. H. pylori treatment, on the other hand, is a common test question. There is still no gold standard for treatment, but most physicians use either the triple or quad therapy. Both include a proton pump inhibitor to reduce stomach acid, they each also require two different forms of antibiotics as well to kill the microbe itself. Quad therapy also uses bismuth, which acts to coat the stomach lining. Vibrio species are relatively easy to remember. For cholera, the first line of treatment is oral rehydration therapy. ORT is basically a sports drink with slightly different proportions, consisting of half a teaspoon of salt, six teaspoons of sugar, and a liter of water. The World Health Organization now also recommends the use of antibiotics in severe cases, but the formula for this can be a bit confusing and goes beyond the scope of this class. Questions will almost always be regarding rehydration of patients as a first line of therapy, despite level of severity. As we are discussing respiratory diseases next, do you recall which antibiotic class is ineffective for treating this category of infection? I'll give you a hint. It requires oxygen for the antibiotic to activate. We also briefly discussed the use of macrolides as first line for atypical pneumonias. Legionella is one of the bugs that falls into this category. An elderly patient with respiratory issues or a business person back from a recent travel can lead us to think of Legionella. On the USMLE Step 1, you are more likely to see first line treatments. However, I threw in Cipro for severe diseases as well, just as I've run into a few of these questions in the past. In general, you should only consider other options if the first line is not listed as an option. Pertussis is a treatment we almost never need to prescribe due to mandatory vaccinations to attend most public schools. Any diagnosis with this disease by physicians is mandated to be reported to the CDC's National Disease Surveillance System as well. However, if a test writer wants to throw a curveball at you, be ready. Think of it as another atypical lung infection, which should help you remember that a macrolide can be effective for this bug as well. Hib is another that is almost always vaccinated against in the US, which makes treatment questions more rare. Luckily, it is also still susceptible to some beta-lactam antibiotics like cephalosporins. We can add a beta-lactamase inhibitor for added coverage as well. This is a case where rifampin, is also used to prophylact family members and other close contacts. Unless the question is regarding tuberculosis or prophylaxis, rifampin is almost always the wrong answer. This is one of those exceptions. And for H. ducreae, I don't have a good way to remember that a macrolide is a first-line treatment. Classically, erythromycin is the first line, or azithro. Cephalosporins have been shown to be effective as well, though trials comparing the different drug efficacy and safety profiles did not notice a large difference. Pseudomonas has become resistant to many antibiotics, which is why specialized generations of cephalosporins or beta-lactams have been more important. The earlier creations just don't cut it anymore. It's also susceptible to Cipro, like many of the other microbes in this module. There are special anti-pseudomonal generations in penicillins and cephalosporins, where you may see the need for this would be in certain types of lung or skin infections, especially hospital-acquired pneumonia cases. Now that the treatment tier in each module isn't as cluttered with the basic categories of drug classes, it would be a good time to begin adding in some of the more common questions you will need to be familiar with regarding antimicrobial agents. Quite often, you're not simply asked what antibiotic to treat, but what the side effects are or the mechanism of action sometimes even what the second treatment option is if the first line isn't working. For the USMLE Step 1, the latter topic is often limited to patients that are allergic to the first line treatment. In the next tier, and throughout the following modules, we'll add to the complexity of these topics.